For this lesson, what we will be having is the nth order solutions for homogeneous, linear, ordinary differential equations. So I know it's quite wordy, but then you have to take note of those words. So again, nth order homogeneous linear ordinary differential equations. Um, and then we will be taking up the first case, which is real, distinct, and the second case, which is real and repeated. We'll be discussing nth order linear, homogeneous and non-homogeneous, ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients. Let's just say that these a sub zero, a sub one, etc., up to a sub n minus one and a sub n, they are the constant coefficients. And then these are the differential operator. So this one, um, the nth order derivative of y with respect to x. So you can see that the nth order is uh, placed in first and then followed by n minus one order and so on until the first order until what you see here is just the y. So this represents the nth order differential equation and then it becomes lower in terms of order. If rx is equal to zero, then the equation is homogeneous. So let's just call this type number one. And then if rx is not zero, then it's non-homogeneous. This is type number two. For today's lesson, we will only be discussing type number one. For example, if we have two y double prime, plus three y prime minus five y is equal to zero. If I ask you, you can say this is a homogeneous linear, because it's of the first degree, second order differential equation with constant coefficients. Whereas in this case, look, what is the order of the second example? Third order, what is the degree of that third order? So in this case, for the second example, you can see here that this is of the third order. Therefore, this one is simply non-homogeneous linear third order differential equation with variable coefficients. Let's go to differential operators. I know you've already seen something like this in your differential calculus and integral calculus. So for example, you have the differential operator D. This basically represents the derivative of Y with respect to X, that capital D. So this one is the derivative of Y with respect to X. Therefore, you can see here that the kth order derivative of Y is the kth derivative of Y with respect to X. So for example, here, if let's just say a, if a is equal to a sub zero, a sub one, a sub n minus one, and so on. So basically these are the constant coefficient multipliers of the differential operators. So that's the nth order differential operator. And then it becomes lower until it's just the constant, right? is equal to rx. If that rx is equal to zero, okay, we know that this is homogeneous. So if I multiply that a, the set of differential operators with y, I know that it is basically solving for the differentials of y or the derivatives of y of those orders. So for example, we have here 3d to the third minus 5d to the second plus three, parenthesis y, this basically means, so this one, this is basically three, d third order, y minus five, d second order, y plus three, y is zero. Or if you want to write this in terms of the Leibniz notation, the one we're used to seeing, it's basically, third order derivative of y with respect to x minus five second order derivative or basically just the second derivative so this one does not have a d it's just three y it does not have a differential operator again with the differential operators 
any linear differential equation can be expressed in terms of the D notation. So the differential operation, the differential operator notation. For example, y double prime plus five y prime plus six y is equal to five x minus three. So these one don't contain y, so it's okay to have them on the right side. This y prime is a derivative, second order derivative. So you can replace that with d to the second. And then this is first order derivative. So it's just d to the first, or you don't even need to write the first. So this becomes d to the second y plus 5dy plus 6y is equal to 5x minus 3. And then what you can do, you notice that all of them have y's, the variable y. You can factor it out to have this. We're basically just going through how they can be written and what the operations could be. So let's go to this. This is actually the final topic. This is the sort of like the culminating why we're why we have studied the previous ones. So in here, the nth order homogeneous linear ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients. So this is the general form. It might be a bit daunting to see this. A sub zero, A sub one, A sub n minus one, and A sub n, they're basically the constant coefficients as per the name. The d to the ny over dx, and basically this is the nth order derivative of y. And then you can see here that the order decreases as you go along the line until you reach here the first order differential equation or first order differential operator until you have just the variable and then that's equal to zero meaning it's homogeneous hence the name nth order because of this homogeneous because of this zero linear meaning it's of the first degree Ordinary differential equations, yes, because they are not partial, right? With constant coefficients, because a sub zero, a sub one, a sub n minus one, and a sub n are all constants. So, so it's not as straining to the eyes seeing all of these. You can just write them as the differential operators d. So this is d to the nth order, n minus one order, until it's the first order okay so if you want to rewrite this and remove the y's you can just say a sub zero d to the n plus a sub one d to the n minus one and so on and then you can factor out the y that's equal to zero so basically it's the function of the differential operators of y equals zero with that the general procedure in solving for this is number one form the characteristic or what you call the auxiliary equation function of m equals zero so if you have this form you would want to change this form to something like this so instead of d you will replace those with letter m but instead of y, you remove the y already. So you equate this to zero, and then number two, obtain the roots of the characteristic or the auxiliary equation. So the roots are m1, m2, and so on, depending on the order. And then the rest of the procedure depends on the nature of the roots, because we have two cases. Right, I'll show you later on the two cases. We have case one and case two. Actually, we have four cases, but for this lecture, we'll only discuss the real roots. For case one, real and distinct roots. Case two, real and repeated roots. So the characteristic auxiliary equation, this has been given before. What you do here is you propose a solution. So if, for example, guys, your y, that y there, is equal to e to the mx the first derivative of this y would then be m times e to the mx the second derivative would be m 
e to the mx times another m. That's why it becomes an m squared. The third derivative is an m cubed. Therefore, to summarize this trend or this pattern, the nth derivative of y is basically the nth power of m times e to the mx. These are some of the notes. The function of the differential operator should first be changed to the function of m. And then this one is what you call the auxiliary equation. You solve for the roots of the auxiliary equation. Once you already have the m, it would take this form of the solution. Please take note of that. C e to the mx is equal to y. That is the solution. So case number one, again, real and distinct roots. If the roots are real and distinct, that is not repeated, the general solution is of the form y equals c1 e to the m1x plus c2 e to the m2x plus so on until it's an nth root. So let's just try. These are some examples and these are some of the conditions. So I'll solve. The first one, this is actually, if you want to say, this is actually d squared y or d to the second order, d of y plus 2y equals 0. This is the function d y equals 0. And then uh, what we do here is we factor out the y. So now it's in this form. Now, according to the steps, we change those differential operators into letter M to, to get the auxiliary equation. So F D Y, you change that to F of M equals zero. So that becomes an M squared minus three M plus two, that is now equal to zero. So next step is solve for the roots. So this is step number one. Step number two, and then step number three. Solve for roots. Therefore, if we would want to solve for the roots, I can say, m minus 2 and m minus 1 is equal to 0. So either m is equal to 1 or m is equal to 2. Sorry, I need to change the answers. So now, what is the nature of your roots? You can see that the nature of the roots are real and distinct. And earlier, Remember, I showed you that the form of the solution is this one. y is equal to c times e to the mx. Therefore, I can say that my final answer would take the form of y is equal to c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the 2x. This is what you call now the general solution. Now, I have a question. Are we given any um, conditions? So, we are given initial or sometimes boundary conditions. What are those conditions that y sub zero, a y of zero is equal to zero, and that y prime of zero is equal to four. Now, y of zero, so I can say zero is equal to c1 e to the zero plus c2 e to the zero. So zero is basically c1 plus c2 we have equation number one. Now, you have another one. The other condition is y prime. So if your y, guys, is this one, can you please tell me what y prime is? 
isn't y prime simply c1 e to the x plus 2 c2 e to the 2x? Therefore, if you plug in the value, you can say 4 is equal to c1 e to the 0 plus 2 c2 e to the 0. And then if you cancel out those terms, that can be canceled c1 plus 2 c2. You can call this your equation number 2. Equation 1 minus 2, I'll have um, negative 4 minus c1. So negative 4 is equal to 0 minus c2 or c2 is equal to therefore c2 is equal to 4 c1 is simply negative 4 the final answer is y is equal to negative 4 plus c2 which is 4 e to the neg to the to x so this is your particular solution. So some of you might ask, how did we get the general solution? Take note that according to this characteristics of the auxiliary um, equation, for the solutions, it is in the form of y is equal to c e to the mx. Therefore, if you have roots, there are a lot of roots, c1, c2, and so on, and then root number one, root number two, and so on. Therefore, in here, I have only two roots, one and two. Therefore, for one, c1 e to the 1x. For this one, c2 e to the 2x. Let's try this. According to this one, this is simply the third d to the second minus two. Ah, instead of y, this is in terms of x, I'm sorry. All right. So, if I factor out the x, it's this, and then you can first replace this. So, m cubed plus m squared minus 2m equals 0. What's the next step? Factor out m so that this one becomes m squared plus m minus 2. Now, I can still factor this out as m plus 2, m minus 1 is equal to 0. Therefore, what are the roots? The roots are m equals 0, negative 2, and 1. Therefore, what would be your general solution? This one would be x is equal to c1 e the zero t because it's with respect to t plus c2 e to the negative 2 t c3 e to the t let's cancel out what we can cancel i sorry this one would be c1 c2 e to the negative 2 t plus c3 e to the some of you might ask, is it okay to interchange them? Yes, it can be c1 e to the negative 2t plus c3 e to the t. You can interchange them so long as um, the roots are present and one of them is a constant. In here, it's already written in as the operator. So you can see, so you have the auxiliary equation, m minus 3 and m plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, m is either 3 or negative 1. So again, real and distinct. Therefore, I can say y is equal to c1 e to the 3x plus c2 e to the x. So again, you might say, sir, is it okay to have c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the 3x? It's okay. You can interchange them. So this is your general solution. Those are your general solutions, okay?
because you're not given any boundary or initial conditions. Now, this one, we're about to be finished. If the characteristic equation has a root m equals a that occurs n number of times to represent the real and repeated roots, your solution would be c1, c2, x, c3, x squared, and so on. So instead of simply c1 times e to the ax, since it's repeating, you'll notice that there exists those x, those excess. I'll show you how. So this one is an example. In here, you're already given the hint, m equals 2, 2, 2, 1. Therefore, I can say if m was 2, 2, 2, and 1, you can say y is equal to c1 e to the 2x plus c2 x e to the 2x plus c3 x squared e to the 2x plus c4 e to the x. So some of you might ask, sir, where did those x's come from? Take note, the first time a number appears, there's no need to write x. The second time that number appears, in 2x, you have to write an x there. The third time it appears, it becomes an x squared. And then the power increases and increases. And then look at this. If m equals 1, it's the first time that number appeared. There's no need to write the x. So some of you might see in your books this one. Um, c1, c2x, c3x squared, and then all of them are for root m equals 2. And then there's another one with another root. So there are basically two distinct roots. It so happened that 2 appeared three times. That's why there are three constants that represent that. Okay, last one. If we solve this, this becomes m to the 4, 6m cubed plus 9m squared is equal to 0. So if I factor out m squared, you're left with m squared plus 6m plus 9 equals 0. m squared, this is m plus 3 squared equals 0. There, that means 0 and 0. And then this one is negative 3 and negative 3. So both of them appeared two times because m squared, that means it appeared two times m plus 3 squared, the negative 3 appeared two times. So what will be the solution? c1 e to the 0 x, c2 x e to the 0 x. So the first time, the 3 or the negative 3 appeared, this becomes c3 e to the negative 3x. The next time it appeared, there is already an x. So again, if you want to separate them, you can just say c1, c2x. Both are for this one. And then c3, c4x, both are for negative 3. You can just say constant 1 plus constant 2x plus constant 3, constant 4x, e to the negative 3x.